Okay, so uh, the, in the first part, uh, I explain you about the body symmetry. So some animals show no body symmetry, or we call it as absence of symmetry. Uh, some animal have uh, bilateral symmetry, and some animal shows radial body symmetry. Okay, so many bilateral symmetry animals show cephalization. So cephalization here means concentration of nervous tissue at the anterior end of the body. So as for chordates, right, uh, the concentration of nerve cells can be found or uh, can be seen at the head uh, region, okay, which, which forming the brain. So the flatworm shows the simplest animal uh, showing cephalization, okay. So not all animals show cephalization, right. So they are include uh, those animals that show cephalization can be seen in the uh, platyhelminthes, phylum platyhelminthes, uh, phylum of uh, arthropoda, phylum of nematoda, and of course in the phylum of chordata. So we are going to explain this in detail later. So this is the flatworm, just for information. So you might be confused or you might be asking um, what is chordates? So chordates here are animals in the phylum of chordata. So we call it as chordates. Okay. So what are the differences between chordates and vertebrates? Okay. Both chordates and vertebrates shows uh, all characteristics that belongs to uh, the phy animal in the phylum of chordata. So what are those characteristics? I will explain later. Right. So they are include few features like nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits, post anal tail uh, in the points of their life cycle. So just uh, take this, uh, remember this word so uh, where I will explain further later. But the main differences between chordates and vertebrate is that some chordates do not have vertebral column or we call as the backbone or the vertebrae. So that is the difference between chordates and vertebrates. Okay, so what I can summarize here is that uh, not all chordates have vertebrae. Okay, not all chordates have uh, vertebrae. Okay, right. Okay, so this is uh, the again the picture that shows uh, not all uh, phylum of animal kingdom show cephalization. In fact, some have been successful uh, with a complete absence of cephalization, meaning that even they are not having a set of nerve tissue, they still can live and survive. Okay, right. Okay, next we go to the uh, next characteristic that uh, characterize uh, animals in the animal kingdom, which is the tissue. Okay, some animal uh, are lacking of tissue, meaning they are just, just made of cells, specialized cells, so they are the sponges. Okay, the sponges lies in the first phylum of the animal kingdom, which is the phylum of Porifera. And uh, some other animals have tissue, but they are lack of organs. Okay, so this is the next hierarchy of the kingdom of Animalia, which is the animal in the phylum of Nidaria, like jellyfish. So they have tissue, but they are lacking of organ. And those other animals starting from platyhelminthes onwards shows a uh, having organ system okay so you can see here all right uh, next uh, the tissue like i say so some animal have tissue uh, which uh, sorry some animal do not have tissue but only have specialized cells some animal have tissue but do not have organs something like that so those animals that have tissue they are being subclassified into how many layers of tissue okay some animals have two layers of tissue which we call as diploblastic all right the two layers of tissue are ectoderm the outermost layer and endoderm the innermost layer and the between or the middle layer between the ectoderm and endoderm are occupied by only jelly substances with few cells that call as mesoglia so this uh, kind of tissue can be found in animals in the phylum of Nigeria, for example. You can see, for example, here the jellyfish. So it has the ectoderm layer, the green in color, 
and endoderm layer, the blue in color. So the middle layer here just uh, filled with jelly substances with few cells, which we call as mesoglea. And another animals uh, that have th uh, three layers of tissue, we call them as triploblastic. Okay, triploblastic mean they have three layers of tissue, including endoderm, the innermost layer that forming the internal organ, mesoderm that form the middle layer, including the muscle. Okay, so just remember M middle, M muscle. Okay, circulatory system and also skeletal system as well as ectoderm layer, the outermost layer that make up the epithelium and also the nervous system. Okay, so you can see from this picture, this picture differentiates the diploblastic and triploblastic. You can see the diploblastic only has two layers of tissues, which are the ectoderm and also the endoderm, whereby the middle layer here are filled with jelly substances. Okay, All right, and as for this one, this is the cross-section of triploblastic organism which have three layers of tissue, the ectoderm, mesoderm and also endoderm layer. Alright, so since uh, some animals do have tissues, either two layers of tissue or three layers of tissue, so they are going to be subclassified into body cavity. Right, so what is the character, uh, category of body cavity? So the body cavity we call as coelom. Okay, so coelom is a body cavity. Either it is filled with fluid or filled with air that separating digestive tract from the outer body wall. And the coelom, which is the body cavity located, please bear in mind, located within okay, the body cavity located within the mesoderm layer okay so you can see from here right it shows you an analyte an analyte here having how many layers okay it has three layers of tissue the blue one is the outer covering the ectoderm layer all right the yellow one is endoderm layer the innermost layer that forming the lining of digestive tract and the red in color showing you the mesoderm layer so you can see the coelom or the body cavity are lies here within the mesoderm layer so you can see the body cavity is located within still within the mesoderm layer okay all right so animal that having a body cavity or true body cavity right we call as coelome okay example the earthworm in the phylum of Annelida. Okay, and and some other organic, uh, some other animals have false coelom, or we call as pseudo coelom, whereby the cavity is located between. Okay, I repeat, for pseudo coelom, the uh, body cavity is located between mesoderm and endoderm layer. Example, roundworm. So roundworm lies in the phylum of nematoda so what you can see from here they still have three layers of tissue the blue one ectoderm layer the yellow endoderm layer and the red one showing you the mesoderm layer so what happened the body cavity located between between the mesoderm layer and the endoderm layer so this is the characteristic of pseudo Coelom. And some organism, some animals are lacking of body cavity. So we call them as R coelomic. So R here means none or, or not having. Okay. Uh, so R coelomic are those animals that are not having body cavity. So they still have three layers of body tissue, okay, which make up from ectoderm endoderm mesoderm but they are lacking of body cavity so they are those animal in the phylum of nidaria and also platyhelminthes okay so what are basically the advantages of salomid okay so salomid body plan is allowing contact between mesoderm and endoderm which permit localized portion of digestive tract 
to develop into complex, highly specialized region that the, uh, for example, like the stomach. Okay, so you can see from here. Okay, uh, it shows you the cross section of human body. So you can see that the innermost layer here is the endoderm, right? The pinkish color here is the mesoderm, the muscle, right? So this is our digestive tract. For example, uh, intestine, right? So between the muscle, okay, the muscle and the intestine, there are cavities located with still within the mesoderm layer, okay, right? Which it is filled either with air or with fluid, okay. And the outermost layer here, showing you the ectoderm layer. As for pseudo salome, right? The mesoderm and the endoderm are separated by the body cavity. So you can see the body cavity lies here between which separating mesoderm and also the endoderm layer. So it limits development, uh, developmental interaction between this tissue that ultimately limit the specialization of the tissue. For example, it will develop a digestive tract without stomach, for example. And as for R silomate, okay, so for R silomate, remember they are not having body cavity. So what they have is just uh, a gastrovascular cavity with a single opening, okay, a uh, single opening which uh, acting as mouth and also anus, or we call it as incomplete gut, okay. So these are, uh, this can be found in animal, okay, in the phylum of Nidaria. For example, here, the jellyfish, okay, that have gastrovascular cavity. But as for sponges, okay, sponges do not have, uh, remember, sponges are not made of tissue. They just have specialized cell. So, thus, they are, they are using these cells to trap and ingest small organism intracellularly. Okay. All right. So, um, now let's recap. So you have here three different types of tissue, body tissue, right? Are silomate, pseudo silomate, and salomate. So remember, all of them showing three different layers of tissue, make up of three different layers of tissue: the ectoderm, the red color, okay, mesoderm, the purple color, and also the endoderm, yellow, right? As for our silomate, remember, for our silomate, they do not have uh, what uh, body cavity. So, it can be found in the flatworm, okay, animal in the phylum of platyhelminthes, uh, platy alright. And as for pseudo salomate, you can see it has three layers of tissues, alright. And the body cavity is located between, between mesoderm layer and endoderm layer. So, example of the organism is the roundworm, okay. And as for salome, okay, example the earthworm in the phylum of Annelida, okay, the body cavity is found within, within mesoderm layer and endoderm layer.